the hands of an indigenous seamstress. Once, long ago, there was a woman of our First Nations people. She was a highly respected elder, for her hands had brought so much to her tribe. She worked long hours. She cooked, cleaned, helped to teach and raise the children. However, she was most honored as the best seamstress the tribe had ever seen through its many generations. She made the most interesting clothing. She would sew deerskin shirts, pants, cloaks, belts, bags, and shawls. She made loincloths, saddles, garters, aprons, baby cradle boards, and baskets. But her specialty was sewing regalia dress. This included dresses, moccasins, headbands, hair pieces, jewelry, bags, pouches, and shawls for women. It included dance roaches, headdresses, war bonnets, back bustles, bone breast breasted plates, beaded vests, bear claw necklaces, and armbands for men. Her revered hands also crafted horn dance walls, wands, horn dance wands, eagle wing fans, war shields, and medicine bags. These regalia pieces were among the most beautiful anyone had ever seen. Each piece specifically tailored to fit and express each individual. You see, without a written language, these clothing pieces served as a major form of visual artistic expression. There was a strong emphasis on the connection between clothing and identity. This was a holistic worldview where every design and pattern were linked to both ritual and mythology. The hands of the seamstress created personal adornment that became an important element of Indian communication. Her tribe's clothing was made from animal hides, decorated with colorful, complex, geometric and floral designs. They were made from quills and intricate beadwork, feathers, fringe, paint, hides, bones, teeth, shells, porcupine quills, furs, claws, antlers, and beads were all used to decorate regalia for men, women, and children. Each one represented the person wearing it in a way that expressed their individual style and personality. For those in authority positions, gorgeous feather and bone headdresses and bonnets with buffalo horns and eagle feathers were crafted to serve as symbolism of great warriors. The soft downy of eagle feathers was attached at the tip of each larger feather that was symbolic of the mysterious forces of the world and their continuous movement suggested communication with a higher power. Ermine or weasel skin and buffalo horns evoked courage and strength. Feather war bonnets were a military decoration. And the finest headdresses were made from the greatest, most powerful of all birds, eagle feathers. And each feather signified deeds earned through bravery and honor in battle. It is believed that the wearer of each piece could take on the characteristics of every animal, color, shape, and design contained in their regalia. The eagle feather brought great power, 
vision and a sense of flight. The buffalo horn brought strength and fearlessness. The porcupine quill brought protection. The plants, flowers, and smaller birds brought grace and dignity. Regalia was worn during ceremony, rituals, and battle times. These regalia pieces took weeks, sometimes months to create and great respect and honor was given to those who made them. As a well-respected seamstress, this elder woman was honored and celebrated throughout her life for her beautiful creations. But as she got older, her hands started to ache, tremble, and stiffen. It became more and more difficult for her to create these amazing pieces. And then she began to notice that her designs were changing. She started using more and more plant life in her design and beadwork. She made long leaves with large intricate roots, large orange petaled flowers, and small dainty white flowers with the yellow middle were contained in her artwork. Her hands ached heavily and these new designs were all she could manage. Until one day her hands ached and stiffened so much that she couldn't continue her work. So she decided to take a walk and as she walked she noticed that the plants of her artwork were surrounding her village. She hadn't realized that this was where her new designs were coming from. And without thinking, she began picking the plants, taking the flower heads, the leaves, and even digging the roots of her designs. She filled a large basket with them and then she grabbed one of each of her gatherings and rubbed them in her hands together. The oils, fragrances, and medicines of these plants seemed to relieve her hand pain. So she created a powerful healing salve using the herbs that intuitively came to her through art. Now, this wonderful, driven, artistic woman had a cure for her inflamed, achy, stiff hands. And she was able to comfortably continue her important work for many years. The regalia she made told a story of each individual. And each story was expressed with the utmost respect and beauty. Her love poured into every piece of clothing, every accessory, and the tribes people were so very grateful for the tale that each bead, feather, shell, and quill told. The colors, designs, and shapes held a narrative to describe the wearer of each item. For our First Nations people saw our link to nature saw our connection to animals, plants, and the elements. They sang with the waters, danced with the winds, spoke to the plants, and learned from the animals. In this beautiful circle of life, they appreciated everyone and everything just as it was. And this amazing woman had now brought a healing salve to allow her and her fellow seamstress to continue this long love tradition for many years to come. This is a story of our, how artistic expression can bring honor, intuition, and healing, even through the most traumatic of times like war and pain. 
If you are interested in learning how to come into healing, trust your intuition and honor your experiences, then I may just have a program for you. I am Christy Asplin, Native American spiritual healing coach, and I help my clients unblock trauma, grief, and guilt to live a life of peace, purpose, and connection. I offer herbal remedy and spiritual healing workshops, yoga classes, Reiki treatment and certifications, and more. Please reach out to me if you are interested in learning more about my programs and my spiritual healing workshops. I would be happy to set you on the path for more information. Thank you and I look forward to hearing from you.